Talking about right believing here today. Are you with me? So the Apostle Paul says, God said to him, the Lord said to him, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength. Strength here is dunamis, miracle working power is made perfect in weakness. And the word made perfect is show itself most effective in your weakness. God's power show itself most effective in your strength, in your weakness. Are you with me? All right, do you remember in school, we all took biology or science class, and then we all learn electricity and all that, okay? Or your technical class, whatever. You learn positive, positive, zzz, no power. Negative, negative, also no power, right? Positive, negative, zzz, shake, rattle, and roll, babe. Shake, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Speak of Elvis, come out! I'm all shook up. It's all out in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Some religious people are just mad about that. All right? It's a way of casting out religious spirits. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> negative, negative, negative. Positive, positive, no result. Positive and negative. Zzz, power. The light comes on. God's gr superabounding, disproportionate grace is positive. God is positive. We are negative. The problem with us is that we are negative. God's grace is positive. We try to be positive when we come to God, all right, to get his positive. And then when we try to be positive and get God's positive, there's no power. But when we say, God, I don't know how to pray for this person, negative but I'm, it's all yours, Lord. Positive. Bang! That's power. God does not want you, listen carefully, I'm not saying positive thinking here, I'm talking about, about the fact that who you are. Many of us don't realize, many of us are trying to become positive. We are trying to have strength that we don't have. So we don't have it, we pretend we have it. Some years ago, God spoke to me and the Lord said to me this, I hate hypocrisy. I said, I notice that, Lord, when I read the scriptures, I notice that of all the sins that you rebuke publicly, even adultery, even prostitution, he never rebuked openly. But when it came to hypocrisy, he rebuked openly. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, he rebuked openly. I said, why, Lord? Why do you use such strong language? Because sometimes when I preach to people, you know, about your love, and they bring this point up, I, I, I need a good answer. And his son... The reason I, I hate hypocrisy is because I love those hypocrites. I said, I don't understand, Lord. And the Lord said this to me. What is hypocrisy? I said, pretending to be what you are not. You are this, you pretend to be this. this. You put your best foot forward. All right? Now, if you put your best foot forward and the Lord loves you when you are pretending to be best, you will never really feel loved. And whenever you are normal, you come back to this again, you don't think God loves you in your negative. Are you listening? And that's why the woman of Canaan, asking Jesus for a miracle, she was a Canaanite, a non-Jewish non girl, yet she pretended to be a Jewish girl. And the Lord was quiet. Didn't even answer her. Finally, she fell back to a position of a Gentile. Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall. The Lord says, great is your faith. He wants to come into your gutter and love you there so that you really feel loved. And when you really feel love for who you are, that's when his power is able to take you out of your gutter, from the guttermost to the uppermost. Amen. Are you listening? I was so touched when the Lord said to me, I don't want, I don't want people to pretend to be what they are not, but to come to me as they are. Even to tell me, Lord, I don't love you as much as I should, Lord. I would love to hear that. And I say, no problem. I'll be your love. Lord, you know that I still got a bad temper problem, Lord. The Lord says, no problem. I'll be your strength. But we pretend to be what we are not. 
And then when we are pretending, we think that God is loving us, we don't feel loved. You got to feel love where you are to have power to become what God wants you to become. But God doesn't say, become plus, and then I will love you. God never says, because it's in your negative, I love you. Amen. Now, if you believe that, you have power to plus. Amen. Are you with me, church? Amen. Do you understand so far what's going on here? All right, what Paul is saying. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may tabernacle over me. In other words, Paul knew when he was weak. Let me show you other examples of weakness. The next verse. Therefore, Paul says, I take pleasure. Hey, this guy is radical. I take pleasure in infirmities, in weaknesses, in reproaches, insults. How many of you, when people insult you, say, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now the power of Christ is all over me. Thank you. <laughs> Got any more insults? No? None of us think that way. Jesus taught us that when men speak evil of you, leap for joy. You read that before? Sermon on the Mount? Leap for joy. The Sermon on the Mount in the account of the Gospel of Luke says, leap for joy, for great is your reward in heaven. When someone insults you, that's the time you are in a position of weakness. That's when God's grace defend you. All this becomes avenues for God's grace to manifest.